everyone and welcome to a new episode of Virai's Wellness Podcast. Today we have Tushar with us. He is the founder and CEO of Consultancy Ventures. He is a thought leader and thought influencer. Tushar supports startups and growth stage companies in diverse sectors and have been awarded several times for his support to startups, including one from Dr. Kiran Bedi herself. Tushar is a venture advisor with Loyal VC. He is a mentor, judge of startup pitch events at entrepreneurship sales of top academic institutions. So you guys know who to reach out if you need your judge for that e-cell program. He is connected with 450 plus investors globally. His expert opinion is often sought by leading business news channels and publication, and he has done 300 plus talks. Just Google him for that. He is a BTEC, MBA, and did his executive education and leadership from Harvard Business School. He is a great, great supporter of spirituality, and that is what we are going to talk about today. Welcome, Tushar. Thank you so much for coming to our podcast today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Neetu. Uh, I would love to talk about this particular aspect a lot, and especially with you, because you have yourself been doing so much of work in this field. Yes, thank you so much. So wellness is something which is very close to my heart, Tushar. And I think this topic should be discussed more than it is being done now. Uh, because, uh, you know, I have been a startup founder and I had to close my startup because of, you know, struggling with my mental health issues, which which translated into physical health issues. And uh, I, I have understood the importance of taking care of your own wellness, not just mind, but body and soul in, you know, complete unison. So that is why I started this podcast and I, I love talking about it. And I would like to know, since you advise so many startup founders, what is that one problem that they are facing in this their wellness journey? I mean, have you come across any startup founder who has uh, who's struggling with their wellness because of their business side? Well, uh, Neetu, I feel that uh, what happens is that when you are in a job, so, uh, you know, whenever you are giving focus to a particular issue or a call, then beyond that, you are able to convince yourself it is not my company. End of the day, I am on a job. Right. But what happens is with a lot of people who are not disciplined, uh, you know, there are some people who are very regulated. They will walk at a certain time in the morning. They will walk at a certain time in the evening. They will eat uh, limited because they know they need energy for a lot of responsibilities. But, you know, after this uh, mobile has come in, the screens have come in, uh, what has happened is that we are bombarded with so much of data all the time. And because we are bombarded with so much of data and, you know, the data is regulated by artificial intelligence. So uh, we get to see only very precise stuff. So the mind starts running very fast because the data is being shown to you very fast. And you are on the screens 8 to 10 hours a day. So what happens is the mind can't rest. So that is the biggest problem which is happening with all people from all walks of life that, you know, the mind is not able to rest. One wakes up in the morning and the mind is drawn towards the mobile. And instead of doing your disciplinary tasks, like giving some time to your health, giving some time to meditation, giving some time to pranayama or yoga, you know, uh, you are constantly giving time to the screens. And mind is more and more tired. And so I, I feel that for people who are, uh, you know, it's not easy to discipline yourself when you are being, uh, you know, faced with so much of data, which is analyzed by artificial intelligence and they know what you like. So it is not easy for anyone to regulate yourself, to discipline yourself, to, you know, uh, stay away from it and, uh, and, you know, that's why uh, I saw one of your status on WhatsApp uh, that, you know, you will check your messages only 12 noon or 8 p.m. Yeah. So, you know, this is exactly what my uh, sister's husband tells me that he never picks the mobile from the charging place because so that, you know, once he picks it, then he'll keep on using it. Yeah. So he only stands, he only stands there and uses it. So, you know, this is the biggest problem, which is, being faced by uh, people from all walks of life. But if you want me to give you 
um, example of founders who face problems, then you know it is they are unable to differentiate between work and personal life because you know they they feel like picking calls at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. because it's their own business, is their own work, is their own money, and so they will work on Sundays also. So that that particular uh, lack of a clear division between personal and professional life. Uh, when you are a founder, that is the biggest problem. Yeah, I think uh, what has happened, I mean, over the years is that uh, the discipline part of managing all aspects of your life has really gone and people are focusing only on one aspect, which is, you know, the job, the work that we do. We need to realize that it is just one part of our life. It is not our whole life. And what is happening is we are putting in all our energy in that direction due to which the other areas of our life suffer, which is our health, which is our relationships, even finances. And of course, we you know don't end up developing ourselves, our skills. So which ultimately results in, you know, putting so much energy in work because, you know, if you don't have the right skill set, you will end up doing more work than what is required and do the hard work than the smart work that is needed in the business so that's that's what you know it was an awakening for me as well when I was struggling with my health issues and I was like okay you know enough is enough and now I have to focus back on my health because this is one foundation on which everything else rests so that has become my top virtue now everything everything comes after my health so what was that uh, awakening moment for you Tushar when you were like, okay, you know, uh, I need to take care of other areas of my life as well, not just my work work. So what was that awakening moment for you? Well, you know, uh, I faced a very bad situation when I was working in a telecom company. Uh, I was reporting to two people. One of them was a disciplinarian. He used to reach office at 9 a.m. He was a, uh, you know, uh, very disciplined guy and he used to leave at 6 p.m. And the other guy, he used to stay back till 10 and 11 p.m. So, you know, my office hours were 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. And I used to drive two hours from Delhi to Gurgaon and back. So I broke down. In the seventh or eighth month, I broke down. And uh, that was when I uh, was under uh, antidepressants. And uh, I took it for many years. It was only in 2016 that I realized that uh, I am, you know, instead of regulating myself, adopting the uh, natural ways to heal myself, and meditation, pranayama, yoga, naturopathy, uh, I was relying on medicines, which were, you know, it's not that they are the 100% cure to it's any fun. problem. Yeah. Because they have side effects. Like, you know, they made me temperamental. I was making wrong decisions. I was being, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was relying on the wrong kind of people. And I started getting cheated. And, you know, because I used to sleep very uh, heavily because of the medicines, yeah. the next day when I woke up, I hardly had any sense of judgment about what I did wrong the previous day. So, you know, the, they make you numb and they accentuate your uh, traits. So, you know, like uh, I rely on my sixth sense to make decisions. So it made me temperamental. So, uh, you know, so those things, I used to eat a lot and then I used to uh, um, talk a lot and, you know, so those problems were there. So, and I realized that if you rely on allopathic antidepressants, uh, then in the later stages of your life, you are likely to get a dementia or schizophrenia. Yeah. So, you know, I said, you know, to hell with this. And in 2016, I started taking control of my life. Uh, I had huge uh, headaches when I left those medicines. Uh, and uh, I had bouts of uh, self-doubt and whether I will be able to move to a new life. But uh, I just didn't give up. I said, you know, whichever way I have to live without medicine, and uh, I adopted a lot of healthy things like I, uh, you know, uh, I regulated my time out from the home and uh, I did a lot of things which um, stabilized myself. And uh, I, you know, I also discovered myself after the, I left medicines. Wow. Like, you know, I did, a, I did an event 
in Delhi University. I was a judge. That was the first event. And one of my college seniors uh, who had sponsored the event, he had requested me to be a judge there. And I did it so well. You know, I started getting offers from other events and I didn't know I was good at it. But I have done 300 in the last six, seven years. Yeah. So, so I discovered, you know, it's a journey like you have to stop believing that medicine is a panacea for all your problems. Yeah. Uh, you have to believe more in yourself as a nature's product uh, and, you know, adopt the healthier ways uh, to cure yourself. Wow. Love that. Love that. And I completely resonate with you, Tushar, because I have also been through a similar journey. I was given antidepressant too, and I took just one dose. And that day, my head was spinning like anything. I could not even walk down from the stairs because I was, I had this feeling of dizziness that I'll just fall off the stairs. And I was like, this is not going to be the rest of my life. I really need to do something about it. And I don't want this creepy medicine for the rest of my life. And I started reading about it that what can I do to, you know, come out of this zone and how can I live a medicine free life? And that day I manifested that I'm going to live a medicine free life. And that day is today. I mean, and this today has been like since one year. So I did have to take like medicines for six months, but those were Ayurvedic medicines to, you know, manage the symptoms for the interim. But then, yes, I did a lot of self-healing. I started, uh, you know, expressing my gratitude for everything, feeling the abundance that I have and, uh, you know, uh, started reprogramming my, my mind for the positive outcomes in life. And that is something I think everybody needs to know that you need to live a disciplined lifestyle maintenance is so important that you just cannot live without it that is something that is very important and mind management that is something we should be taught at school honestly i mean i don't know why we are not being taught how to manage our mind in school but that is something which is easily doable i mean ever since i've learned neurolinguistic programming this is something which has become a part of me because my brain has been reprogrammed to think positive gratitude feeling the abundance and trying to help others and have living for that higher purpose. So absolutely, absolutely resonate with you, uh, Tushar, on that. Uh, tell us if somebody has to start this journey of, you know, uh, if somebody is already on antidepressant and they want to get off it because you have done it for yourself, what is your advice to those people? See, my advice to you is we are 97% water. We are, we are actually a very malleable kind of thing. You know, we are just uh, flesh and bones. Like, you know, so we don't realize how much the small things affect us physiologically, mentally. Everything is interlinked. So if you are having a, a packet of chips, which has a fatty, uh, uh, low fat, you know, it will affect your mood. It will affect your... Uh, uh, health. So, you know, you have to live a healthy life, which means uh, eating the right thing, which means stop sleeping late, which means seeing the sunrise, which means, uh, you know, uh, there are three axes on which uh, we are based. One is the nature axis, that we are a product of nature. So, agar aapne, you know, if you haven't seen the birds and the trees, that is one axis you are missing. The second axis is the God axis, which is consciousness, which is there is something larger in life, which is out there, which is the universal consciousness, right? You call it God. You call it the third power. Everything is right. If you are praying in front of an idol, it is right. If you are, don't want to pray that way, that is also right. If you... But you have to believe in a higher power. You are not God, right? So uh, you can become a higher consciousness. You have to believe in that. For that, you'll have to uh, take the help of a guru or a mentor. And I did uh, take classes from uh, Dr. Shubha Kulkarni, who was a director in HR with Hewlett Packard India. And she learned Bhagavad Gita from... Uh, uh, Gita Press Gorakhpur and they told her to give the gyan further. 
तो शी कंडक्ट्स अ बैच सो आई लर्न भगवत गीता फ्रॉम देयर एंड एंड आई रियलाइज दैट इट इज आउट देयर बट दे नेवर टीच इट इन द स्कूल्स बिकॉज़ यू नो ऑन द थिंग सेकुलरिज्म सेकुलरिज्म आई मीन दीस आर दीस आर ऑल द बेसिक थिंग्स अबाउट लाइफ हाउ टू लुक एट लाइफ सो uh one is the nature axis one is the god axis the third is other people you know your approach towards society your approach towards other people uh, you know so that these three axis if you are managing well then you know you'll be getting all the hormonal satisfaction you'll get all the right kind of hormones you know you'll do some danam in the temple uh, feed some poor people do something for the animals and you know so that balance so the you know with the digital screens the balance is missing and you know i feel that once we accept us as product of nature rather than product of a digital world it will lead us to happiness again yeah yeah so all those founders who is listening to this podcast please start taking care of your natural access you know <laughs> start going out in the sun look at the grass hug the tree and uh, you know be uh, you know charitable give as much as you can because the universe is so abundant the moment you start giving it will give you tenfolds back so keep a you know mindset of abundance gratitude and uh, live for a higher purpose i think that is what you are trying to say kansal right <laughs> yeah uh, so my next question kansal would be uh, what is your biggest learning that life lesson that you want to share today with the audience see my life lesson is nothing is really very big in life so don't take it seriously very seriously i mean companies open they close down countries change their names uh, you know the biggest dictator goes down and uh, you know someone new comes up some war happens then it closes down some you know today amazon is a huge company tomorrow it might lose market value in billions of dollars the world the life goes on so the moment you start uh, saying that oh god this will happen and then you start becoming an irritable personality that you know ye ho gaya mere sath and you are set getting irritated and you are getting irritated why is this guy saying this thing why is that happening take it easy i mean you were taking it easy when you were a kid right you were and and you had no idea how you are different from others because yeah. that's why you were happy so you know uh, buddha has said that you know uh, be child like be buddha like which means that if you are child like you will be in a higher consciousness the moment you start uh uh you know uh, the moment you start uh, being in a body form that you know main aisa dikhta hu main aise bolta hu mere paas ye car hai mere paas ye ghar hai so you know all those money starts getting in your head and because money starts getting in your head your life your happy happier life starts going now because you have to give 8 hours every day to work that is the reality of life but don't put the money inside your head it will you you will get money you will get success if you are happy you know i have seen uh, founders who made millions of dollars of company and they they life they laugh so much they trust people they they are on their own journey and still they are making money they are not in so so you know for all this to happen you have to drop your judgments about life that you know founders are like this investor is like this you know the world is like this and that particular white people are like this and indians are like this you know you have to drop your judgments else you will never be happy and you will judge yourself also you will judge others also end of the day you will be left with a judgment sheet and no happiness so this is what my biggest advice to founders is So the biggest advice from the Shah Council today is be a child. Don't grow up childlike. Not be a child. Be childlike. Fall into place and uh, and keep that childlike uh, you know zeal in you alive for as long as you can. Curiosity, inquisitiveness. You know the love for seeing something beautiful, some nature thing, and you suddenly you are so happy about it. You know that. So you know 
you have to be like connected with the real life uh, and disconnected with the artificial one like the movie matrix you know <laughs> yes yes that and that makes so much sense to shar and i have deeply felt that and you wouldn't believe i would do the strangest of thing at the strangest of places because i am free of judgments from what people will think and uh, i think that has given a new meaning to my life that you know if if i can do whatever i want at whatever time i like at whatever place i am i think i i am at peace with myself so yeah I, I, and i can totally relate to what, what you are saying when you say that be child so you uh, so you, you followed uh, which path did you follow in spirituality like you know i have been through a many of them shri shri ravi shankar sadguru and uh, we are followers of naturopathy as a family and i read i read uh, some buddhism and i did bhagavad gita classes so you know i've kind of mm, done you know try to learn many things so what do you follow so tushar uh, i am a very logical person you know and i analytical as well so i need logics and analysis in everything and i go by what science says so what i started doing was i started learning neuro linguistic programming i learned cognitive behavior therapy i learned uh, psychotherapy hypnotherapy so things that are being backed by science because uh, see we are all made of our beliefs right so my belief was i need logic in things that i need to do and that is that is when i started finding logic and i started also researching on neuroscience so it and it has the, the entire thing has a lot of you know uh, value because and talk about in bhagavad gita also so it's not that i don't read bhagavad gita or i don't read other modalities i tried reading astrology also but it was so difficult so i could not do that but uh, the basic core is same how kind, what kind of belief we form in our mind i think this is what has that has been discussed in every modalities whether it's healing reiki uh you know neuroscience therapies cbt everywhere the core of every uh you know mind management is working on your belief system the moment you do that uh you can change anything that you want so uh that's that's what uh, i i think neuro linguistic programming changed my uh, life i would say that yeah it's really awesome <laughs> thank you so much tushar thank you for coming today and sharing this with us thank you. Uh, honored and i think audience has a lot to take from this podcast today thank you so much thank you so much thanks neetu thanks uh, thanks and you know your journey uh, uh, you know it looks like you have found your path so you know i'm really happy about it you look happy and uh,